Hi, I'm Scott Morgan with Flex Your Rights. I want to talk for a few minutes about an article I had published in Huffington Post recently called Five Reasons You Should Never Agree to a Police Search, Even If You Have Nothing to Hide. The article has generated a lot of great discussion around the web, so I just wanted to share some of the basic ideas uh, for, for our, our friends here on YouTube. And um, you can feel free to, to add any questions you have in the comment section afterwards. Um, well, basically, I think there's a ton of discussion around the web about the, the abuse of, of police power in America, the way protesters are treated, um, the way our criminal justice system has just swollen to epic and embarrassing proportions, the way uh, marijuana and other drug laws are, are enforced. Um, there's tons of concerns about all of these issues, but I think that we don't talk nearly enough about sort of what our basic rights are during the most common situations involving uh, a citizen encounter with a, a police officer. And uh, so that's why I think this topic is so important. Um, being approached by an officer on the street or, or pulled over in your vehicle or, or um, approached at your doorstep and asked to consent to a search is one of the most typical situations that can happen and the consequences can be really, really severe. So I think it's important that people understand some of the, the very good reasons that you should think twice before ever giving a police officer permission to search uh, you or your things. The first one is that it's your constitutional right. The Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says that police need probable cause or a warrant to search you or your belongings. Uh, unless they have probable cause or a warrant, uh, the only way they can search is if you say, sure, fine, go ahead and search me. So why would you do that? You know, the officer is looking for evidence to get you in trouble. That's the only thing they're trying to do. They're not trying to help you find your car keys. Uh, so giving them permission to search you makes no sense at all. The officer is, is an investigator and their job is to, to find evidence and, and arrest criminals and that's where their authority comes from. They don't have the authority to give orders to innocent people so if they don't you know, if they don't already have a reason to, to suspect you of a crime, they have no authority and no reason to be bothering you. They, they can't tell you to do jumping jacks or show them your boobies, and they can't tell you to empty your pockets if they don't have a good, valid, legal reason to do so. And so it's not your obligation to just go along with any, any orders that they give you. They're not in charge of you. You're actually in, uh, their boss, so and they're here to, to help us. So we don't have to voluntarily let police officers dig through our things and it's it's absurd to, to think that we would have to do that and absurd to think that you have any any interest in helping somebody investigate you whose only goal is to put you in jail for for a crime um, now the second reason and this is a really important one where a lot of people get confused is that refusing a search actually protects you if you end up in a, uh, in court as a result of, of a police search now a lot of people point out and and this is is true that when you refuse consent to a police search it's common for police to go ahead and search you anyway and the reason that happens is that the officer could claim that they have probable cause for some other reason and and go ahead and proceed uh, with the search and then try to argue it out in court. Now this happens all the time, uh, but uh, it's very important that you make it clear to the officer that you're not agreeing to that search. As long as you consistently said no to the search, even though the officer went ahead and did it anyway, even if they found you know a bag of marijuana or something else in your car, that doesn't matter necessarily because when you get into court, what uh, your lawyer will do is argue that the officer didn't actually have uh, legal grounds to perform that search. And your saying no to the search doesn't count as legal grounds to suspect you of a crime. And so it's very, very common for, for defense attorneys to actually win these cases. And we've discussed this with, with expert lawyers all over the country, and it happens every single day. And the, the lawyer uh, makes what's called a motion to suppress, and they make the case that the evidence was gathered illegally, and, and the judge will then throw it out of court. It's not guaranteed to happen, but it's a common outcome that's only possible if you say no to the, to the police search and assert your constitutional rights. And so what people get tripped up on is, well, if they're going to search me anyway, what's the point of refusing consent? The reason you refuse consent is because you can then get the evidence thrown out in court. And this is also true if, if uh, there isn't anything found in your vehicle. But if you want to file a complaint or sue the police for harassment, obviously you can't say that they were harassing you if you gave them verbal permission to go digging around 
around in your things. And so saying no is, is critical to establishing your legal standing to challenge the evidence and challenge the officer's actions. And so, so that's really important to understand. Um, the third reason you should never agree to a police search is that saying no can in fact pre prevent a search altogether. Yes, it's true the police will sometimes search you uh, without your permission. But it's also true that they often won't. Uh, these are, are what we think of as sort of fishing expeditions in many cases, where the officer, maybe they don't like the way you look or the neighborhood you're in, or maybe they just have a quota to fill and they're, they're trying to make as many busts as they can. They will go up and ask people to search through your bag or, or your car for no reason. It happens all the time all over the country. And um, so when you say no, when you show that you know your rights, suddenly this isn't, you know, obviously not going to be such an easy, um, easy uh, bust for them to make, you know. Um, so it's common for, for police officers to actually back off when they realize that they don't have the legal authority to proceed. Because why go to all the trouble of, of digging through all your things only to, to get the evidence thrown out in court? Um, so this actually happens all the time, and you can go to the success stories page on flexyrights.org and read some of the, the wonderful stories we've collected from, from all over the country from, from our friends and supporters who've uh, refused searches successfully. And um, so it really shows that it works and gives you a good window into some of the right ways to do that. Um, a fourth reason why you should never consent to a police search is that searches can waste your time and damage your property. Um, you know, when you agree to a police search, you're agreeing to sit there while a stranger digs through all of your things for potentially very long time. You know, a search on the side of the highway can take half an hour, 45 minutes, and if anything's broken, uh, then uh, you're responsible for the damage because you agreed to let these people mess around with all of your things. Um, so, you know, uh, unless you want to have all of that happen, it really doesn't make sense to go ahead and give them permission to do it. Um, the fifth reason you should never agree to a police search, and this is a one that a lot of people don't even think of, is <clears throat> how can you really be sure that there's nothing anywhere in your vehicle that could get you in trouble? I mean, unless you bought the car new and you're the only person that's ever been in it and you know that you've never had anything illegal in the vehicle, it's really hard to be certain. I mean, you've ha probably given rides to a number of people. You never know what could have fallen out of somebody's pocket or... Um, if you have passengers in the vehicle when you're pulled over, that's a concern too. And we hear about situations where a passenger sees the lights flashing behind them and they go and stick something under the seat, you know, um, you know, thinking about their own interests, not yours. Um, and then it's also possible uh, if you're driving a used vehicle that you don't know what the previous owner might have used the vehicle for. Um, and, you know, there can be hidden compartments deep inside your car that you don't even know about. And police are, are, are looking very thoroughly, more thoroughly through the vehicle than you might ever have. So uh, the outcome of those searches um, could be very serious for you. And it's only because you waived your rights and gave the police officer uh, permission that you're fully on the hook for whatever they find. And believe me, try telling an officer that something illegal doesn't belong to you. I didn't know it was there. You know, they hear that all day, every day. So even if you're completely innocent, you can really get yourself in a lot of trouble by naively assuming that the police officer has your best interests in mind and that being honest and cooperative is going to work out well for you. You know, our prisons are just filled with people who assume that. And, you know, this isn't to say that, that we need to have a disres disrespectful attitude about police. That's really not it at all. The officer is just doing their job, you know, by trying to investigate crimes. But you're doing your job as a citizen by asserting your constitutional rights. And so that's really what this comes down to. Now, for a little bit more information and some more specific uh, techniques and advice on asserting your rights in these difficult situations, uh, we have a lot more material on the Flex Your Rights website at flexyourrights.org, and we have a ton more videos on, on YouTube that you can check out that show you know, live action encounters and some of the best techniques for handling those. So there's a lot more material where this came from, so please check it out. <clears throat> and finally, if you'd like to support our work, 
Uh, the best way to do that is to donate through our website at flexyourrights.org. Now, all of our videos are available totally for free, but if you want to support us with a donation, uh, we'll send you a hard copy of, of one or, or both of our, our DVDs, 10 Rules for Dealing with Police and Busted, the Citizen's Guide to Surviving Police Encounters. We don't want you to donate if you can't afford to, and that's why all of our material is available online. But if, if you do want to support our work, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and be safe out there. Take care.